The Beagle Bone has these JST ZH connectors for the motors and actually the way we wire it, we put the red wire in the opposite side. So I'll show you how to do that. I dissect these in the same way as I do with the DuPont connectors. So you can look up those videos for a very nice close up view. And uh, this is pretty hard it's e and it's easy to smash, accidentally smash the contacts. So um, if you're not sure if you'll succeed, then wait until you have some practice or get a friend that has practiced. When you insert them back in, you gotta put the little burr at the top. Okay, and then push it until it clicks. That's nice. After reassembly, the, it's good to do a tug test. Make sure the wires can't come out. See, oh, that one actually did come out. I was not expecting that. Okay, so the way to solve this is pinch down a little bit on the, on the tab. You're going to plastically deform it just barely, and that's something you can't do once they're already back in. And then slip that guy back in there. Come on. And then tug test. Now we're good. Okay, the next step is to strip these wires so that we can crimp the other ends into the DuPont connector. And these leads are pretty short, so it's really important to get just as much length as we need. Okay, so I don't want to strip any more than that. In fact, that's maybe a little more than I'd like to have. All right, and then this nice little uh, stripper can do two wires at the same time, so that's pretty cool. But you can see quality control is not perfect. The length is different for these two. Next, I'm gonna crimp these on, and you can watch my other video for how to do that. And by the way, I don't cut these. I actually fold them over so they're equal length and so that we have as much conductor as possible because there's not much conductor here. So you can see here, if you go online to the latest wiring guide, that the motor driver slide shows no pin for the plastic housing on the ground pin here that goes to the motors. And it's a really good idea to add a pin there, uh, just the plastic housing, so that you know where the ground goes. That will prevent you from accidentally flipping the one through four pins, and it also will prevent you, most likely, from accidentally plugging something into the five volt pin, which is always hot as long as the power is going into the motor driver board as shown here. Use a five pin connector for better alignment on the driver. This housing is flipped from the drawing where the metal is exposed only on the opposite side, but um, this is important to have so that you can always get the arrow to be where your, your ground position is. And then the next motor adjacent to the arrow is going to be motor one. And the next one is two. This labeling is just for viewers. On the Beagle, you can see number one goes here, and number two goes here. And the silk screen just barely shows it right there. Okay, let's power down first. And I'll actually fully isolate the power. See, the lights went off. And then we can plug number one. Okay, now if you bend these over now, then you won't have to worry about them flailing around when you're using your robot. You want to get things as secure as possible because things will cycle and wires will, will bend, but uh, the more you tuck it away, the less that will happen and the fewer components that will fail to talk to you later on when you put wear and tear on things. And for those times when we can't see the arrow, I'll put a little dot here. So you always know that's the ground pin. On your robot, you snap your beagle in right next to your motor driver. And then we put the ground pin at the very end here. And there you are. Oh, look at this. Lesson learned time. Remember I said do the pull test? Well, I failed to do the pull test on my red wire. I'm gonna isolate the one, 
Okay, so it looked like the orientation was wrong. So let's put that back in. Here the click, do the pull test again on each wire. Okay, let's plug in again. Put that away. 